Sigma Tiger News. Chinese mind games? Hmm, I don't know if I want to play any of those. Pet tax. Another tax? Are you kidding me? Live to be 100? Not the end of the world. <laughs> Welcome back to Sigma Tiger News, because this community is growing. I'm not even going to say welcome anymore. Forget it. Welcome back, because all my Sig Tigs are coming back. They're joining in. They want a piece. Well, what's going on? What's going on in the world today? Boom. Scientists who thought we were all going to die from climate change reveal seven reasons she was wrong and how the issue is being overblown. A scientist who believed humans would die from climate crisis has made a U-turn and now believes the issue may have been overblown. Well, Hannah Ritchie, a data scientist at the University of Oxford, claims that doomsday warnings of floods, widespread famine, and deaths from disease, or sorry, disasters, are overshadowing the progress that has been quietly made in recent years. She pointed out how emissions per person peaked in 2012 and remain the same since, along with the notion that organic food is not more climate friendly, and that... The dreaded 2.7F of warming, I'm assuming that's Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, <clears throat> is not a tipping point into oblivion. Richie, who published the book Not the End of the World, recently shared the seven key points that led her to change her position on the climate crisis. To get this out of the way, let me make one thing absolutely clear. I'm not climate change denialist or minimizer, reads an excerpt from Richie's book. Yeah, so let's, like, let's get that clear because that's immediately the label that they're going to stick on her. I spent my life inside and outside work researching, writing, and trying to understand our environmental problems and how to solve them. She continued to explain that it may do less harm to consider that the total doom is an exaggeration, as the exaggeration simply acts as a counterbalance to those who underplay the issue. But I'm convinced that there is a better, more optimistic, and honest way forward. The book continued. <clears throat> Small stuff is taking away from the big picture. So all the little nitpicking... Okay. The scientists shared that most people are told to recycle, use energy efficient light bulbs, and end single use plastic. The grand scheme of things, such acts are small and only cause stress, like forgetting a canvas bag when visiting the grocery store. Yeah, it's all a waste of time. It's meaningless until you stop using coal. Period. Debunking the local and organic food myth. People believe that if you shop local and all that, it's better. Humans have overcome environmental crisis. The world was faced with near-global catastrophe starting in the 1980s when British meteorologist Jonathan Shanklin discovered a hole in the ozone layer. And what happened to that? Guess what? Filled back up. It's not a big deal. It's all lies. Alarmism. Emissions per person have peaked and the total is on its way. Global per capita emissions appeared to peak at 5.4 tons in 2012, which has since stayed around the same range. So even with all the advancement in, du in industrial uh, <clears throat> technology and all that, uh, it still has not uh, com com uh, <clears throat> combined to make it even worse. Your choices do make a difference. Yeah, so saying that, like, you know, using a metal straw is going to make a difference. Unlikely. 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit is not a tipping point in the end of the world. The impacts of climate change increase with every increment of warming, and they do increase non-linearly. So going from 1.8 to 2.7 is not as drastic as going from 2.7 to 3.6. If the world perceives 2.7 as going off a cliff, then we would need to keep fighting with each increase in warming. So she's saying just chill. <clears throat> Literally. It's not a big deal. And uh, what's going on here with these cell phones? Everyone thought, like, you know, cell phone radiation's bad. And then Apple came out just last year and they got fined. Or uh, <clears throat> they weren't allowed to sell their, their devices in certain areas because the radiation levels were coming off of their phones were too high for the threshold that they had set. Why did the NIH, the National Institute of Health, abruptly halt research on the harms of cell phone radiation? Great question. Perhaps they discovered something that no one wants to know, or perhaps there's absolutely nothing going on. 
In a shocking reversal, the National Toxicology Program, the NTP of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, has quietly disclosed that it will stop studying the biological or environmental impacts of cell phone radiofrequency radiation. The decision comes despite results from the program's carefully engineered and reviewed decade-long $30 million animal studies that found cancer, heart damage, and DNA damage associated with exposure to cell phone radiofrequency radiation at levels comparable to those experienced by Americans today. <clears throat> the sudden end of civilian government efforts to study potential health impacts of wireless radiation constitutes a glaring abdication of responsibility. In contrast, the U.S. Department of Defense continues to study this problem. Interesting. Well. Why would the Department of Defense want to know about radiation uh, from cell phones? Perhaps to weaponize it, or at least defend against possible weaponization. The European Union is providing multi-million dollar grants for multidisciplinary studies. The French government regularly monitors towers and phones and has recalled millions of phones for excessive radiation or other concerns, reflecting public concerns about both psychological and physiological impacts. In 2019, French ministers passed an order ensuring phones had consumer information that included that teenagers and pregnant women avoid exposing their abdomens to wireless radiation devices. How come this isn't everywhere? And where do you keep your cell phone? Your back pocket? Your front pocket? Usually right in near your uh, reproductive organs? Is that a problem? Could it be? Do we know? Just last year, the NTP declared on its 2023 fact sheet that it would perform follow-up studies to better understand the effect found in the long-term animal studies. So what happened? At this junction, it is unclear. Juncture, sorry. Uh, have the follow-up studies been completed already? Working with Swiss national engineering and U.S. government experts, the NTP had devised small-scale systems for exposing animals experimentally to controlled levels of wireless radiation, yet results from these exposure systems have neither been publicly shared nor published. In a sudden and inexplicable turnaround of this long-scheduled and heavily-reviewed work plan, the NTP now states that no more research on wireless radiation is planned due to the cost of the studies and technical challenges. And there you have it. Uh, modern medical and even causal casual public knowledge and concerns. For example, infertility clinics ask men what their habits are with respect to cell phones and other wireless devices. Why is that? Uh, they tell them to take these phones off their bodies and out of their pockets because there is evidence of a correlation in rodents between wireless radiation exposure and low sperm count, poor sperm quality, and decreased testosterone damage to the testes. There you go. Keep your phone in, away from you. Do not carry it around. What about having it in uh, your uh, breast pocket? How's that going to affect uh, breast cancer? Here we go. Studies have also been carrying a cell phone in one's bra to increase risk of breast cancer. List of adverse health effects associated with this exposure is long and our use of these devices growing constantly. So, what's going on? Don't keep your cell phone on you. Maybe you should have like a lead-lined purse or something like that. Maybe they should have a cell phone case that has a lining of lead inside of it, perhaps. Maybe that is the next big thing. Perhaps the tiger will start releasing these. And what's going on? The economy still continues to grow. Or does it? Uh, GDP jobs numbers, inflation's going down, interest rates staying the same, Jerome Powell comes in on 60 Minutes and says, we're planning three uh, rate cuts. So what's going on? The blockbuster job numbers came out the other day. And everyone was like, what? Like, how is this possible? It was a blockbuster jobs report, certainly one which nobody expected. Starting at the top, the BLS reported that in January, the U.S. unexpectedly added 350,000 jobs, the most since January 2023 when the print was 482 compared to 131, double the consensus forecast of 185, and more than the biggest, high, the highest, sorry, Wall Street estimate of 300K from Natixis. In fact, this was a four sigma beat to estimate unheard of in the past year, but not completely unheard of. Here's another chart here, just selling the absolute increase that was unexpected. Uh, it would be one, or it would be if one didn't think of checking how the average rose. Well, it turns out that since average hourly earnings is a fraction, it did not rise due to a jump in actual wages. But since its earnings over a period of time rose because the BLS decided to sharply slash the number of estimated hours that everyone was working from 34.3 to 34.1, hardly a slash, uh, which may not sound like a lot until one realizes that the last time the work week was this low was when the economy was shut down during COVID. Ooh. Excluding the COVID lockdowns, one would have to go back to 2010 to find a work week that was this anemic. And uh, that was after the great financial crisis of 2008. And speaking of revisions, we had a lot of those. In January, the BLS conducted its annual 
annual re-benchmarking and update of seasonal adjustment factors. Long story short, what was until December a decline in jobs has now been miraculously transformed into gains, as shown in the chart below. How is it possible? How? Pre-revision, zero. None. Post-revision, kaboom! For those asking, the revisions were unambiguously designed to give the impression that the labor market is slowing much less than it is. Consider this. Before the revision, the average monthly job gain in 2021 was largely unchanged, 606k per <clears throat> pre-revision and 604 post. And while the average monthly gain in 2022 was revised lower from 399 to 377, this was purposefully goal-seeked to make 2023 appear stronger. And indeed, the average monthly increase in 2023 has been revised from 225 to 255. So there you go. Let's just go ahead and revise this. It's an election year. Biden, we need to pump. You know what I mean? The economy's doing great. Well, how do we say that? Well, we'll go ahead and release a whole bunch of information and then we'll go back and revise it. So uh, at least at the time of the press release, it looks great. And then when we go back, we'll crunch the numbers and be like, okay, okay, well, it's a little bit off. No big deal. Well, guess what? They're always a little bit off. In other words, just 10% error rate in the seasonal adjustment, roughly where it falls, would wipe out the entire gain and make January increase the decline. Then again, this is the case with every January jobs report because, as shown below, the actual change in jobs in the first month of the year is down anywhere between 2.5 million and 3 million. Look at that. How does that make any sense? They're cooking the books, guys. Don't believe what the government tells you about these reports especially if there's revisions every single year that look like that. Clueless Yellowstone visitor runs screaming, it's hot, after illegally dipping hand in 174 degree hot spring wild video. Perhaps we'll have a look. There's an ad loading up. We'll just go ahead and skip that and go ahead and have a look. Too hot to handle. A hapless visitor to Yellowstone National Park world famous hot springs got a thermal surprise after dunking her hand in the spring's steaming hot waters. In a video that's gone viral, a man and a woman defy legal restrictions and common sense when they dismount a park boardwalk at Silk Spring, the fountain paint pot nature trail in Wyoming. The pair then scurry down a grassy embankment and approach 174 degree hot thermal. Stupid, the man recording the video remarks. Let's go ahead. Do we got it? The ad is almost complete. Lovely. Just got to get that ad in there. Go ahead. Two out of two. Filling it up. All right, here we go. We see the lady going down. Let's go ahead and tune in. <laughs> Who would believe that the steaming hot water, it's very hot. Now you have uh, your moment in stupidity. Middle East crisis deepens as nearly 40 killed in U.S. strikes on Iran-backed group in Iraq and Syria. So, what's going on? If you don't know, guess what? The Houthis are down in the Red Sea, just going ahead and shooting missiles, cruise missiles now. Rocket-propelled uh, artillery. And they're shooting at U.S. and U.K. military assets. So, what does the U.S. do? They go ahead and they bomb a whole bunch of places in Yemen. And then they were like, uh, let's go ahead and bomb Iraq and Syria, too. There's a bunch of groups over there. So, what are they thinking? Well, their justification is that uh, there's people in Iraq that are going to cause us problems. So, let's go blow them up. Well, what about Iran? How come they haven't attacked Iran yet? Iran shot down some stuff over in Pakistan, some militants, and then Pakistan shot some militants. Not the military. You see how they're wording this? The verbiage is like they're shooting uh, groups of militants, okay? So these are like a militia, a group of people who organize with guns and fight for a cause. Militants, military, but they're not uh, government assets, okay? They might be funded, you know, indirectly, but they're not the military. So that's why uh, this is a tickle. So it was 11.51 on Friday. It looks like it's 11.52 here. Go ahead and uh, 40 militants have been killed in the U.S. strikes. So what does Iraq have to say about this? Well, they say it's a breach of sovereignty. Warns of drastic consequences. So it's heating up. It's 11.53. What's going on? After U.S. strikes hit Iran-based targets in Iraq and Syria, Baghdad on Saturday, uh, 
raised objection over the retaliatory measures targeting armed groups on its soil. Iraq has characterized the action taken by the U.S. following the killing of three of its soldiers in a drone strike in Jordan as a violation of its sovereignty. Yeah, so Jordan, uh, a militant group, sent a drone in just as the American drone was returning and they didn't know what was going on and instead of doing anything, they just allowed it to happen. So, like, what's going on with that? How do they allow that to happen? They can shoot missiles out of the sky. They don't know which drone is theirs. Uh, mm, something smells. On the other hand, the United States asserted that it had informed the Iraqi government before conducting the strikes. And uh, Iraq's like, mm, no, you didn't. So, what's going on? It's 11.53. Chinese military studying cognitive attacks against the U.S. population. What are you talking about? Chinese mind games. The CCP hopes to encourage a psychological or cognitive decision to surrender. What are they talking about? Researchers in China's military are studying how to use influence operations to sow discord abroad and encourage a mentality of defeat in the United States, according to one expert. Absolutely. We're talking about the Communist Manifesto here. This is like number one. Mind games. You get in there and you confuse everyone with all kinds of information. Uh, misinformation, disinformation, just flood it and uh so discord what does that mean like separation you know what i mean you're this well and you're that well you guys don't like each other and we'll keep telling you and then guess what everyone doesn't know what's going on and uh they're gonna go ahead and tell everyone that you guys are losers you guys have lost look at you you bunch of fools and people will believe it they'll be like oh man on tiktok's telling us that the americans lost we're losers and they'll believe it, because these people will believe anything. There's a group of the PLA. Researchers often focus on influence operations who argue that the cognitive domain is the new focus of warfare. Yeah. So what did you have before? It was artillery, and then chemical, biological, and now psychological. And so much easier with the internet and these apps. Mr. Beauchamp Mustafaga outlined how researchers associated with the PLA have expressed interest in using inauthentic content, which they refer to as synthetic information, to coordinate precision cognitive attacks against adversaries. So how would they do that? Well, there's things called deep fakes. They're using AI and computer generated images of people and uh, audio and to do create uh, misinformation, disinformation. There was like a bunch of cyber attacks in Canada that Global News, I believe, covered. And uh, then those hackers, those crypto hackers, whatever, they went ahead and took that footage and altered it to make it look like uh, another scam and they used it. And they scammed people using uh, actual footage of the news. So one report published by cybersecurity firm uh, Recorded Future found that the CCP pivoted into a new phase of influence operations in 2022, characterized by the creation of targeted messaging for well-defined audiences that were segmented based on granular demographic data. So perhaps that big giant balloon that was flying over is collecting demographic data. You know, just sucking up from the servers. Uh, whatever they could. And, you know, well... Just like I was saying, the, the Communist Manifesto is to confuse and uh, sow discord and separate, right? And the Chinese are communists. The Russian uh, classic KGB video on YouTube, look it up. KGB says what he's going to do to America. And they say, infiltrate America, uh, cause division, and then so much confusion that they don't know what is correct anymore. And it seems like that's what they're doing. TikTok almost got banned in the government, at least. Uh, why? Because of this stuff. When you go and look, if you ever have the proclivity uh, to go and look at what it says when it you download an app, it's like, oh, yeah, you agree to this, we want to use your mic, we want your calendar, your contacts, your camera. Most people are just go, yeah, okay, just let me get that TikTok dancing kraken. Well, guess what? It says that they're going to access your mic and your camera and your contacts and your calendar and your email and every single thing on your phone. And as soon as you say yes, it begins just downloading that to the CCP server all day, multiple times a day. And why do they want it? So they can do this. Alert! Colorado pet tax for all animals. What are they talking about? Colorado. Huh? Colorado House Bill 241163 enters a new level of big government and big taxes. The bill will add a new tax of up to $8.50 but actually up to 25 on each pet. That includes all animals, even invertebrates. What? The tax is paid every year. It also requires every pet to be registered with the state and assigned a designated caregiver. If you do not name a designated caregiver, the cost of each pet is $25 annually. There's no cap or per household type of maximum taxation. To summarize how outrageous that is, if someone has 100 aquarium fish or koi in a water garden, they could be paying $850 annually to have those fish. 
If you do not register a designated caregiver with the state, that means that having 100 aquarium fish will cost you $2,500 annually. 10 pet reptiles will cost 85 to 250 annually. 20 assorted pets, dog, cat, hamster, parakeet, tarantula, two snakes, three frogs, and 10 fish would cost 170 to 500 each year for this new tax. The tax would apply to all pet animals. A child with an ant farm, ants are invertebrates. Get ready to pay big for those pet ants and parents. So there you go. Uh, go ahead and call your local legislator and be like, what are you talking about? This is stupid. Catholic clergy scholars demand Pope Francis withdraw a declaration authorizing gay couples blessings. So if you don't know, um, Pope uh, Francis came out and uh, stated that, okay, we, we don't want to cause any more separation, okay? You know, these people already have enough problems. And look at Jesus. He was all about helping tax collectors and prostitutes and drunkards and all kinds of immoral people. But the whole deal was, is that uh, go forward and sin no more. I have given you uh, forgiveness. Okay? But the caveat is, you must stop doing what you were doing that was sinful. Okay? It wasn't like, uh, yeah, you are, you're good to go, continue rape and murder, and come back and get another blessing. So anyway, uh, Pope came out and he said, uh, it's cool for you to be gay. Okay? Totally cool. We have your blessing. Priests all around, come on up, we give you the blessing. Great. All the gay people are like, yeah, well, let's put a ring on it. Let's get married. Ooh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, Francis says marriage is still for the heterosexual. So a bunch of people in the church are like, what are you talking about? The whole deal with uh, the Bible is nature, procreation, God's way. You know, I have created and now you go forward and create yourself some of that stuff. But uh, homosexuality, which is considered an immoral act because it goes against the principle of creation... Uh, and it's unnatural. You cannot create uh, anything other than ple pleasure, right? That's it. That's all it does. It der you derive pleasure from that sort of intercourse, and that's it. It has no benefit other than that, right? Is that it? Like, you know, heterosexual intercourse creates children. Homosexual intercourse creates pleasure. That's it. And that's defined. Simple. So basically, uh, in the Bible, in, among, in many different places, like the Christian, the Jewish, uh, even um, the Quran, the Islams, the Muslims, sorry, uh, they're, they're all against it because it's unnatural, meaning nature. You know, it's not unnatural to have those feelings. There's animals that uh, have not gay relationships, but heter homosexual relations. And there's lots of different reasons why they do that. Some of them is rape. And sometimes it's because there's a lack of partners. But it happens, yeah. But it's not common. It's like an anomaly. Similar to what you would consider it in our world. Being like, you know, a very small percentage of the global population that is... Uh, you know, involved in that lifestyle choice. So anyway, like I said, the Bible is explicit in what it states about uh, homosexuality and immoral sexual relationships. And the Pope coming out and saying, okay, yeah, well, it's totally cool. You can do this. They're like, what are you talking about? You have to take that back. So they're super upset with Mr. Francis, Mr. Pope. Uh, Washington State experiencing first known outbreak of potentially deadly fungus. Health officials state four patients have tested positive within the last month. We covered this uh, in an earlier episode that fungus outbreaks are on the rise. Um, they're uh, resistant to any sort of uh, um, uh, medicine. Washington State has experienced its first known outbreak of four. I wouldn't say that was an outbreak. Potentially deadly fungus. Sounds like alarmist. Um, but hey, cautious. Four patients in the last month have tested positive for Candida auris, or C. auris, Public Health uh, Seattle and King County said in a release. 
The first case occurred in a patient who had recently been admitted to Kindred Hospital Seattle, which was identified through a proactive screening program. Additional screenings found two new cases as well as a case with links to Kindred, who had originally tested negative for CRS. When first admitted, the health department said it's current unclear what the initial source of the infection is, and officials said the investigation is ongoing. The case of CRS was identified in July in a patient who was transferred to Kindred from St. Joseph's Hospital in Pierce County. It's believed to be the first locally acquired case of Washington State, according to the department. Health officials said they've been working with the hospital for many months with the expectation that CRS would eventually be found in Washington State. Okay, and here's what it happens. Uh, it includes keeping patients who test positive CRS away from other patients to reduce the risk of spread using specific disinfectant cleaning products effective for CRS. It's a type of yeast that can lead to serious illness and spreads easily among patients in healthcare facilities. Uh, yeah, so uh, candida, it can totally jack up your insides uh, and how you process things. So keep an eye out for that. Battery swapping for EVs is big in China. Here's how it works. Well, we uh, mentioned that uh, the EV is dying. You know, I mean? People are upset with how these things operate in the cold, the charging times, uh, the cost for charging. Well, what if you could just back this thing up and pop the trunk and uh, a machine goes... Oof, oof, and does the old swippity swap and you got yourself a fully charged battery. They used to do this with cell phones back in the day before they were like hardwired into the phone. You could pop the back off and put in a new battery and you'd have chargers. So you'd always have one ready to go. Well, it seems like uh, a move by the world's biggest battery manufacturer, China's contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited to make a concerted push into EV battery swapping has shone a spotlight on the alternative to charging electric vehicles. Tried and abandoned by EV pioneer Elon Musk last decade, battery swapping is starting to catch on in China, aided by a mix of demographics, geography, and surging take-up of EVs. So yeah, that's the thing. If there's enough people doing it, it will be profitable. But uh, Elon uh, didn't have enough people backing it. There wasn't enough people driving it. Perhaps it would work now. So as it works, pretty simple. The EV is driven into a booth where the depleted battery is removed from the car and replaced with a fully charged power pack. What are the advantages? Speed and convenience, mainly. It could help cut design and developmental costs for automakers if they adopt a standardized battery for the convenience of swapping. And then you don't have to deal with uh, the replacement cost of a battery, which is like $10,000. It's like when your battery is gone and dead, people will be like, oh, I'm going to sell this thing now and not tell them. I'll get this naive person to buy this car. And then they buy it and they're like, oh, it's not juicing very good. And they take it to the local Tesla dealer and they're like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, oh, dude, your battery is juiced. And they're like, okay, great. Just pop in a new one. And they're like, oh, that's $10,000, sir. Disadvantages. Uh, well, if you're looking to get in, it's a high startup cost. Batteries are expensive, as we just mentioned. Uh, the structure accounts for a major part of the vehicle design. It'd be hard to persuade automakers to cede control and embrace a standardized battery pack. There you go, just like Apple and their little uh, charger there. They were in all of the Apple products. They refused to play ball with everyone else. All right, you want to live to be 100? Here's the hot ticket. All these people have done it, and this is their advice, okay? Leonard Samuel Sam Baker. He's 101 years old. Do what you love, okay? Choose the right life partner. So number one, choose the right partner. And if you're not with the right partner, meaning that every morning you wake up and you're like, and you get out of bed and every night you go to bed and you're like, leave them, okay? Or talk, try to communicate first. But if you're beyond that, if you're well beyond communication, it's like literally incompatible, then leave them. If you got kids, talk to them first. You know what I mean? Get a head start on it and be like, hey guys, listen, life's like this. This is how it works sometimes. It doesn't always work, but we're going to try and make it work best for us as individuals and as a family. So I promise that I'll stay, but not in this house. And do what you love, of course. How are you supposed to do what you love if without support of a loving partner? Absolutely do what you love. Don't neglect your education. Yeah, get smart. Do your own research. Don't just follow along with everybody. Stay true to your principles. Yeah, develop a system of things that you believe in and follow them and don't bend for anybody unless you love them because that's what love is, is sacrifice. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying. Love isn't all rainbows and butterflies. That's not true. Love is sacrifice. You want a partner in your life? What are you willing to do to have them in your life and to have them be happy? And vice versa. If your partner is unwilling to sacrifice, then they are not good. Learn tolerance. Absolutely. Like what K 
can you handle? Can you handle enough of something? How much of it can you handle? Cherish your friendships. Yeah, don't neglect your friends. If they ask you for help and they've helped you, then see if you can work that out. If they never help you, then try and find a new friend. Think positive. Number one, stress will kill you. It'll cause your insides to turn into, uh, uh, what is that? Like a crusher. It, it just compact you, okay? Compressed. Everything is stress. Relief. Breathe. Think positive. Absolutely. Learn from your elders. Yeah, they have experience. If you think you know it all, then you are young. Believe in your own potential. Yeah, push forward. Always go forward. You can do it. Like, listen, there's people out there that are dumb and they're doing amazing things just because they believe it, okay? If you believe you can do it, you can. And just look around. I mean, there's people doing amazing things and they're not amazing. Keep asking questions. The more you know, the better. And if your kids are asking questions, don't tell them to shut up. Answer the question. And if you don't know, say, I'm sorry, honey. I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. Be kind, number one. Love thy neighbor as you would love thyself. The Bible, the Ten Commandments are great. Like, they're, they're no joke. Have a look. Never stop reading. Absolutely, it keeps your brain healthy, okay? If you're consuming the screen, then you are uh, going to fry yourself. Just as we talked about the radiation that the NIH stopped covering. Keep moving. Stay active. Get your blood pumping. Absolutely, the more sedentary lifestyle, the faster you decline. Stay determined. You know, don't give up. If you fail, get up and figure it out. Boom! Last article of the day. What do we got? Texas man pretended to be a minor. Uh-oh. In order to track down sex offender and left him dead in a ditch, please say, okay, we got a vigilante hero here. What happened? Zoom in. Court documents. A man pretended to be a minor online in order to track down a sex offender and then shot him to death. Court documents indicate that 24-year-old James Lewis Spencer III made statements to the effect that he would do something about pedophiles if cops were unable to dole out justice. Spencer is accused of killing 37-year-old Sean Connery. Showers. In May. Showers had admitted to possessing child pornography when he was 23 years old. He failed to register as a sex offender and then in 2018 he was arrested for entering the Bel Air High School without notifying the office during standard operating hours. He served two years for that event and was later prison in 2021, according to Andy Kahan, Kahan sorry, with Crime Stoppers. According to investigator Spencer, contacted Showers in May while pretending to be a minor and got him to agree to meet him for sex. Instead, Spencer allegedly shot Showers several times as he was walking near his home. The man's body was found in a ditch. Um, someone that knew the defendant tipped off investigators, telling them that the defendant wanted to rob and harm type of men who do bad things to little children. He knew how to track them via an app on the phone. Bond said at 250000 you're here for the first degree felony offense of murder. Uh, uh, he doesn't think that Spencer was justified in killing showers, even if he was going to reoffend. The only time I've seen something like this was in the movies, period. Uh, the first thing that came to my mind was Death Wish, Charles Bronson, a vigilante killer, Bernard Getz. And there you go. Uh, you know, don't take it into your own hands. You know what I mean? Like, your life is over now. For what? You know, some vigilante justice. Not worth it. You know what I mean? Totally not worth it. Don't kill anybody. Just catch them. You know what I mean? Like, actually catch them. Could have devised some sort of thing. Like, got them on videotape, presented all the text messaging and things like that. Anyway, go ahead and uh, like, subscribe, share it around. Friday's video is exploding, okay? And always remember, the headlines, it always goes a little bit deeper than that on this show, okay? I don't advertise the juicy beef all the time, but Friday's episode was full of juicy beef. So if you like what you see, go ahead and tell the world. Sigma Tiger, signing out.